right, folks, welcome back. If you have not yet filed your taxes, you officially have just over a month left. I know. Get on it. Ready or not, April 15th is right around the corner. Here with tips to help us prepare for tax day is private wealth advisor with Ameriprise Financial, Trevor Shakiba and Kevin Jenkins of Jenkins & Associates. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, thank Happy you. Monday. Yes. As we know, time is ticking. We've got to prepare. Yeah, so that's my first point is, look, rip the Band-Aid off. Yes. Uh, get organized. Don't procrastinate. It's going to come. The deadline is April 15th, and I guess you could file an extension, but okay. you, you really don't want to do that if you don't have to. My other tip here is to definitely give your tax professional time. So don't come to them on the uh, you know April 14th with a shoebox of receipts <laughs> and some random statements. Me? <laughs> I mean, you really want to give them the opportunity to, to you know do the appropriate due diligence to find everything they possibly can to save you money in taxes. All right, and Kevin, uh, Trevor just mentioned the extension thing. Yeah. A lot of people, I think, still suffer from some confusion. <laughs> an extension doesn't mean an extension to pay. That's it's right, an yeah. an extension to file. Yeah, a lot of people think if you'd file that extension, oh, I can put off paying the government, you know, their money that they're owed in April. No, they're going to tack on a little bit of a penalty if you do that. So it's best to, if you don't have everything together and you're worried that it's going to be incomplete or incorrect, go on and file the extension, but just know you might have to pay a little bit more. And the point on the screen, I think, is very valid. It's better to file that extension if you're not sure, yeah. you know, if you haven't collected all of your receipts and all that. But I think it also underscores, Trevor, your point. You don't procrastinate because ultimately that costs you money. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as I'm always talking about, that money could be better elsewhere making you money, hopefully. Absolutely. Okay, and let's move on to the IRA accounts uh, that we have to look at for tax season. Yeah, so this is probably the most obvious and easiest. You can contribute to IRAs for last year up to April 15th of this year. And so remember the maximums for last year are 5,500 if you're under 50. And if you're over, it's another thousand. So it'd be a total of 6,500. It's a little bit complicated. You just don't automatically get to do it though. And that's why you'd want to work with the appropriate CPA like Kevin. If you already are participating in a 401k, it may not make sense to do a traditional IRA. And so again, not to get too far off in the weeds, but you have the ability to contribute. It can make sense a lot of the time, but sometimes you need to be careful on what you do there. Having a good CPA is seriously, it, <laughs> it takes all the headaches out, right? Kevin, let's talk about using last year's taxes as sort of a, like a guide for yeah. this year's taxes. Yeah, especially with the tax law changes, you know, a lot of people, they had a different situation this year. Maybe they owed when they didn't expect to, or they got a little bit less back than they thought they would. Uh, you can adjust those withholdings, you know, based off of what happened last year and maybe pay a little more in, or if you got a huge refund, you know, take some of that throughout the year. And you would just like go to your HR department yeah. essentially and yep. fill out a new W-4 and then they'll, they'll adjust your paycheck each week or month or, you know, to, to reflect that. Well, hopefully this will jumpstart people's filing for this year and then start thinking ahead, Trevor. That's the way to do it. Don't be the buzzer beater, you know, like where you're getting down to 1159. Oh, let's file. That was yeah. always me, <laughs> me driving too. to the post office to get it postmarked <laughs> yeah. on the day. Always. Oh, horrible. But when you're doing this for, you know, last year's taxes, you want to think about what's going to it's going to come every year at the same yeah. time, so yeah. think ahead. So that's uh, a great point, and, and really what I'm talking about here is you want to be proactive, not reactive. A lot of the opportunities happen earlier in the year, and so this is a big, big pet peeve of mine. It's not just about saving taxes, but it's also looking to the future and maybe positioning yourself a little bit better from a tax perspective. So think about contributing after tax to a, a Roth 401k. Think about Roth IRAs or even conversion strategies. Um, it's a, I'm a big proponent of saving after tax, and so the tax rates are lower this year, which could be advantageous to convert some money from a traditional IRA to a Roth. Again, working with the, the, the CPA hand in hand here can really, really be beneficial. Also, this time of year, I mean, it's horrible, but all of these IRS scams start yeah. popping up all over the place. And Kevin, yeah. what are some of the scams that people should watch for? Yeah, I'm hearing more and more about it, unfortunately. But, you know, the IRS is never going to call you on the phone and demand money, demand payment right away. And especially they're not going to want you to pay them in a gift, gift card, a Walmart gift card, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't click on any emails that look suspicious. They're not going to email you, you asking you to f fill out a form online or anything. Those people are just trying to get your information to, in some cases, file a tax return before you file and get a bunch of money back. 
Yeah, and wow. that's super simple to do. I mean, obviously, don't open it anyway, yeah. but um, you can also click on the uh, email address. Yep. And typically, if it looks valid, if it's coming from like a government or even a banking situation, yeah. when you go back, that email address is is completely different to what you think it's going to uh, be represented. If you ever have a question, just call the IRS. If somebody calls you harassing you, hang up and call them and ask them if there's any problem or call your CPA. And what are some of the best ways, guys, for people out there, I'm sure many of you are collecting receipts and all that, do people still show up with like a shoebox full of receipts? What's the best way people can stay organized and on top of their expenses throughout the year? Some people do. They, they still do the shoebox method, but I, I discourage that. Uh, spreadsheets or, uh, you know, a, a personal finance software, those, those are always going to be the best where you can just spit out a report. You know, keep keep up with it during the year is the main the main goal. And the IRS does accept electronic copies of receipts, right? So if you yes. have a receipt, you can always take a photo That's right. and keep that yeah. even just stored in your phone. Yeah, right? and some softwares, if you take a picture of the receipt, it'll automatically upload it to the software as you know X Y Z expense. Are there any good apps for that? Do we know? Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, don't do it. I don't want to endorse any. All right, I mean, just really. Keeping track of all there the are. information, there are. spreadsheets probably the easiest yeah, way. Yeah, apps to do and that. spreadsheets. And okay. Well, and Trevor, we love when you come to visit us, and Kevin, we love having you here as well. But I think the the underlying theme with all of your segments is that you got to make a plan, don't procrastinate, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, look, when it when it comes to financial planning, the sooner you get started, the better. And the same thing with taxes. You don't want to just be randomly haphazardly going to your CPA. And again, back to my last point. There's a lot of advantages to proactively be thinking about things, not reacting. And so whether that's Roth conversion strategies or saving in after tax, that can really put you in a better situation for financial independence and retirement. Okay, Trevor Shakiba, Kevin Jenkins, thank you thank guys you. for stopping thank by. You. Thanks for all the advice. And if you would like to connect with Kevin, you can visit his website at JenkinsCPAS.com. And if you'd like more information on financial planning or a complimentary consultation with Trevor and the Shakiba Group, you can call 281-724-9917 or visit theshakibagroup.com.